season Jesus, you're my number Praise the Lord, everyone. You know what time it is. You know what to do. It's time to give God all the glory and honor. You have been <clears throat> through so much. You've been dealing with some things. And you've even been blessed this week. So why not give him all the glory? So he got you out of situations that you couldn't even get yourself out of. But we thank God for what he's doing today. We greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We thank you for connecting with us today. Uh, this is such a glorious day. These past few days have been very glorious. Been enjoying this weather. And so we want to thank God for all that he has done for us. Um, if you can be so kind, this is the time that we always ask to invite someone. However, you connected through Facebook, through YouTube, through Zoom, go ahead and invite someone, even if you're on the phone, send someone the number so they can get connected. Amen. This is an opportunity to hear what the Spirit has to say to the church. And we always talk about that. And that's something that we always need to know. What is the Spirit saying to us since we are the church? And the more that the Spirit speaks to us, the more that we can get beyond some situations, get over some things, and receive increase in areas that we need, because we will be listening to the Word of God that's coming directly from His messenger. Amen? Amen. So, uh, let's pray. Father, we thank you that you have set this date, this time, and this opportunity for us to hear your Word. Connect with us, connect with our heart, allow us to hear you over every situation that's going on in our household, oh God, and even in our lives. Change the outcome of the situation, allow us to be able to see greater things today, oh God, in the name of Jesus. We ask that you always forgive us for every sin and transgressions that we go through, the things that we've done knowingly and unknowingly, oh God. Wipe the slate 
clean. Give us an opportunity to get it right and to be able to receive what we need in this season. This is the season of change, O oh God, and we thank you that we shall receive the change that is necessary for each life, each individual that's connected within the sound of my voice. Speak through me, O oh God. Let your word be a pen of a ready writer that will etch your word on the hearts of your people, causing them to be always victorious. In the name of Jesus, we glorify you. We praise your name forevermore. Amen, 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 amen. And we thank God for you again for being a part of this uh, service. Uh, like I said, this day has been wonderful, and I've been enjoying every moment of it. And it's just been a marvelous day. And so what we want to do is I want to get into this message, message I've been dealing with and I've been thinking about for a little bit. Um, this message is called the cycle of restoration, the cycle of restoration. Uh, it's important for us to understand this whole cycle of what we go through and the things that happen in our lives because it really kind of bring things to light, uh, what's going on in our lives. If we start to see that um, there's a reason why we go through different cycles when you talk about a uh, cycle of trials and then it turns around to be a cycle of being triumphant uh, or victorious as we know it to be. And so it's important to know that those cycles occur and it occurs often and it occurs a lot. And we got to know the actual uh, reasoning behind that. And once we start to understand that, why it occurs, um, we will have the hope that we need that whenever we go through a situation, whatever we go through a trial, tribulation, that we are never defeated in it. That's the whole premise of this, that we need to know what it takes to have the mindset that we're never defeated in things that we go through. We know it can happen. It can change in an instant. What's good today could be bad tomorrow and then turn around and be good again. We have to understand that cycle of restoration uh, because it's something that is going to happen on a continuous basis. And once we have clarity in that, then we shouldn't be worried about the things that we're in and what we go through. Uh, our life can be like a turnstile. You know, a turnstile is this little mechanism that you go through and you're trying to get in, but then you can also come right back around. And so trials can lead us back to being uh, victorious or triumphant. The triumphant part of the cycle happens because God has planned. Um, he has put a plan in place that will help us to recover, rebuild, um, to restore from the trials that we go through. And so we always have to know that this cycle that we're in right now, if you in, no matter where you are, if you in this cycle in terms of you going through stuff, just know that at some point it's going to turn around. And so we always say that all things work together for good, where the reason why it works together for good is because God has a perpetual plan in place that will provide us with ongoing restoration. I'll say that again. He has a perpetual plan plan. That means something that's ongoing, that's in place that will allow us to have restoration to turn around our worst cycle of trials in our lives. And we have to keep that in mind. But go to uh, Isaiah. Go to Isaiah, the 54th chapter. We're going to read uh, verse 17. Isaiah 54 and 17. It says, no weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. Every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment shall condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, said the Lord. And so we start looking at this process, and this is basically a summary of the actual plan that God's God have in place his restoration plan. Um, I recommend that when you get a chance, go back and read the whole thing. You start to see in the whole chapter, uh, the 54th chapter of Isaiah, you start to see how God set up this plan and he start to show his people that he wanted to show them kindness. 
And so you start to see how all of this come to play. He even sets it up and tell you how he used to be and the way that he is now. And so all of that is, is a part of this plan. And so, but in the text we read uh, in this part of the plan, it's meant to inform us that there is nothing harmful that we can ever experience, ever go through, ever uh, be into right now that we can't recover from it. You have to always know that whatever you're dealing with, whatever the situation is, no matter how hard it is, no matter how much you're dealing with this, how much is, is making you uh, not sleep at night or it's just so much on you, you can recover from this. You have to know that, that you can recover. Otherwise, then you are going to just uh, just bunk out, just do some crazy stuff because you can't see beyond where you are. But you're going to have to trust that where you are right now, where you're standing right now, and how you're feeling right now, even though it's not good, you will recover from it. The scripture says, no weapon formed against thee shall prosper. But the scripture doesn't say uh, the weapon will never hurt us in some capacity. The weapon will hurt you in some capacity, in some kind of way, because the weapons are designed to do damage in a certain way. It's designed to cause damage in some uh, capable way or some way possible. It's going to do damage. But weapon, because weapons, you know, some weapons, we could use the weapon to either protect us or in some cases, people can use the weapon to cause harm. And so, however, if it's used to cause harm to you, God has a plan that will counteract the effects of that weapon and, and, and cause you to come out on top. It, it's, it, it won't prosper in a sense that it won't keep you defeated permanently. In the sense that regardless of what happened or what the deal is or how it transpired, or even who the weapon comes from. See, the Bible says simply, no weapon formed against us shall prosper. But the scripture doesn't say any mention or any name or not even naming the creator of the weapon. Because we have to keep in mind that we can be the ones, our own self can be a creator of a weapon. We can have uh, the, the capability with our own hands to design a weapon that will hurt ourselves. And so we have to keep in mind that self-inflicted wounds can happen. It's, it's a real thing. It can leave us with feelings of shame, hatred, uh, in its aftermath. And so we have to know that we are capable also of creating and fashioning and forming that weapon that can hurt us, uh, in our lives. And so what we do to ourselves can impact us for a long time. You have to know that the things that we had, we do to ourselves, that self-inflicted wound will hurt every time. It will last and linger every time because you are reminded of that when you see yourself in the mirror. Every time you step into the mirror, every time you see a reflection of yourself or you just sitting quiet, you are reminded of what you have done wrong. And that's just the trick of the enemy. The enemy always wants you to think that the things that you're doing or the situation that you are in that you had just done is a lot worse than what it appeared to be. But you have to know, no matter how bad it is, you can get out of it. It's a, it's a chance for you to escape that. And so we have to know that thanks be to God that he's given us an opportunity to be restored from self-inflicted wounds. The things we do to ourselves, not not what anyone else do to us, the things that we set there and we done and now we feel the pain of it, it can linger a whole lot long. So we thank God that God has the ability to even restore our weapons that we formed against us, that it will restore us to a place that it doesn't prosper any longer. And so God's restoration plan is part of our inheritance because we are his servants. The plan gives us a way to escape situations. I'll say that again. The plan gives us a way to escape the situation, regardless if it's outside uh, interference or inside internal, which is us, as we mentioned earlier. Uh, we have the, uh, the plan is, is going to give us the ability to, to, to restore that fight in us, 
restore confidence in us, restore the strength that we need, and restore our sense of purpose. Those are the things that we need. If we don't have that restored or we don't have that in us, at some point we could just give up living. We can just call it, can't, we can cancel out our lives because we don't have a purpose. We don't have the strength to continue on. We don't have that ability to fight anymore. And there's many people are giving up because they have lost those things. And so today is the day that we need to be able to look at things in a different perspective and know that God can restore you at any time, any moment, any through any situation. You can't get through this fight. You can get through this fight. This too shall come to pass. So right now, some of you might be even dealing with something that's greater than what you've ever been through in your whole life. Um, and it's it's something that's taking every bit of strength out of you. In fact, it's getting tougher and tougher to get out of bed. You the strength, the little strength you have to rise out of bed to go to work or to 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 help raise the kids or do whatever it takes to be who you are. It is getting tougher and tougher to do it. And so that means that the trial is taking its toll on you. And the longer it takes its toll and the longer you remain in that situation, it's going to overtake you. And then it's not going to be much left for you to do no more than just give up. So you're going to have to look at this and have a different perspective on what you're going through. You're going to have to adopt a different perspective. Let me show you something. Go to 1 Peter 4, and we're going to read the 12th verse, 1 Peter 4 and 12. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened unto you. And so Peter's saying, look, I, you have to look at this, what you're dealing with, what you're going through, as not as being as strange as you think it is. You're not the, the only one going through this trial. You're going to have to take your mind and think that this thing I'm going through is such a relatable thing that people elsewhere are going through this thing. The mind has the capability of intensifying our situations. You can sit here and think about what you're dealing with and what you're going through to the degree that your mind will make you think it's more intense than it really is. How we perceive our trials uh, can lessen or increase the intensity of the trial. You can, someone can t look at a paper cut and say, that's the worst thing ever. Whereas someone could tell you and talk to you and convince you and, and give you some thoughts to your mind that that's really a light thing. You, you're going to survive a paper cut. And so some of the things that we see in our lives, yeah, it's intense to you. But in actuality, to God, it's a paper cut. And he's trying to explain to you, you are dealing with a paper cut. Let me help you get through that. Let me show you how to take care of it. And so your mind has the ability to make everything very intense or it can make it very less intense. It's up to how you perceive things. And our perception of what we're going through has to be of the mindset that this is something that everyone else is going through. Everyone else, if you take that common approach to your trials, like it's business as usual, this is something that comes up that everyone has to deal with at some time, that common approach would serve you well. Let me show you something. Go to 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians, the 10th chapter, and we're going to read the 13th verse. 1 Corinthians 10 and 13, it says, The only temptations that you have are the same temptations that all people have. But you can trust God. I'll say that again. But you can trust God. You need to underline that and make sure you get that etched in your mind. But you can trust God. He will not let you be tempted more than you can bear. But when you are tempted, God will also give you a way to escape that temptation. Then you will be able to endure it. I'll say that again. God will also give you a way to escape 
that temptation, then you will be able to endure it. And so you have to look at what you're dealing with. Temptations of trial are basically the same. They are common to all men. Every man is going to be tempted. Every man is going through a trial. We know and we see this often enough that man born of a woman or a few days and those days are full of trouble. So everybody who has breath in their body are going to go through the trials and tribulations and temptations that is common to everyone. So don't think that there is something different that you're going through uh, that no one else had ever experienced. The Bible said there is no new thing under the sun. So there's nothing that you're dealing with that is completely new that someone else on the face of this earth is dealing with right now. There's someone that may be on the other side of the continent that's dealing with the same thing you're dealing with. And so it may not seem like it. It may not appear to be that way because no one is openly talking about the problem that you're dealing with. Same as you. You're not telling everyone what you're going through. You're not saying how you feel about the situation. You're not talking about that self-inflicted wound that you've you done to yourself. You keeping that hush hush. And so everyone who's going through the same issue is keeping that stuff hush hush until somehow, some way it comes to light. And then you find out, you know what? I'm not the only one dealing with this thing and you are not the only one dealing with it. So everyone is dealing with this thing and it's common. Say common. It's a common thing that's happening to anybody in this world. And so I can tell you for certain, for certain that what you're dealing with, what you're experiencing right now that's making you feel all this pain and heartache and situation and sleepless nights, you are not the only one dealing with it. I can tell you that for certain because the word tells me, and I'm certain of that, what the word says. And so you have to find a way to deal with this thing. You're going to have to find that it's not a common thing. And when you understand it's, I mean, it is a common thing. And when you understand that it's common, then you know that you're able to endure it because you know that you're not the only one dealing with it. It's the same. If I'm going through something and I have people going through it with me, that brings comfort to know that I am not in this situation by myself. So you have the ability to understand that whatever your situation is, I don't know for certain, but the Holy Spirit knows what you're dealing with. And the Holy Spirit is ready and prepared to tell you that what you're dealing with is not an uncommon thing. Every man, every woman is going through this process. And so you have to know it's how you look at this. Because the more you look at this situation to be a common thing, then you start looking and focusing on the way of escape that God has set up for you. People who looking and know that how things are and used to it, Start looking for the next process. You know it's a cycle that you, you're going through. And so now that you're going through the cycle of trials, then you have to know the cycle of restoration is going to follow. And so you know this too shall come to pass. Oh my God, I hope that got into your spirit. This too shall come to pass because God is making a way of escape for you. Now, when you look at things to be uncommon, you think this is something strange that you're going through, then you stop looking and you stop focusing on the way of escape that God can prepare for you. God is going to prepare that way of escape. But if you're not focused on it, you're going to miss out on it because you're dealing with the uniqueness of this, this, this trial. You're looking at it as this strange thing. And anytime you are looking at the strainness, strainness of it, you're going to miss on what God is going to do because you're trying to get adjusted. It just don't feel right to you. No, it's never going to feel right, but you got to know it will leave your life at some point because of the way of escape that God is going to make for you. And so we can't deal with, with tying ourselves and getting ourselves entangled in the affairs of this life, because there is always a process that will get us out of this. God's way of escape will always lead to restoration. Now, I'll say that again. 
God's way of escape will always lead to restoration. And so go to uh, Joel. Joel, the second chapter. We're going to read uh, 20, the 25th and 26th verse. This is my last. I didn't want to make this thing long and drawn out because I want to dive into this more come Wednesday. So let's go to Joel, uh, Joel 2, 25 to 26. And I will restore to you the years that the locusts had eaten, the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you, and ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God that had dealt wondrously with you and my people shall never be ashamed. And so we have to look at this whole process and say that when, when God's restoration comes, it's going to involve a few things. It's going to involve uh, you eating plenty. That's a good thing to know that you're going to have plenty to eat and we're going to get more into that. Boy, I'm so I want to say more about that, but I, I got to curtail myself today because I'll just spill all everything. The next thing you're going to be satisfied, satisfied in knowing that things are, 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 are flowing. And then the, the next thing is uh, we're praising his name uh, starting to. And then uh, the, the thing here's the. The ultimate thing that you will never be ashamed. See, restoration is about those things. You're going to have plenty to eat. You are going to be able to be satisfied. You are going to be able to praise his name and you will never be ashamed. Those are the things that we're going to dive into come Wednesday. Come and join me Wednesday at seven o'clock and we're going to start diving and peeling back uh, the, the onion on this restoration plan that God has for us so we can see how that outcome uh, comes into play that we just mentioned about eating plenty, being satisfied and praising his name and never being ashamed. Those are important things that help us to get through the trials that we're dealing with. And we start to see and start looking for that restoration plan that God has for us. The restoration plan is important. It is important for your survival to keep you living the life and keep you functioning and keep you fighting and keep you with confidence and keep you expecting, having that spirit of expectancy from God. And it's important for us to have it. And so come and join me Wednesday and we're going to dive into that and we're going to make sure that we completely understand the cycle of restoration. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that you have given us an opportunity to hear your word today. Allow us to be able to take that word and place it in a place that would allow us to uh, blossom into something awesome today. Oh God, we thank you that it shall teach us how to live this righteous life that you have set forth for us. We thank you, God, for every person that within the sound of my voice begin to uh, see the actions of this word, oh God, in their lives. I thank you for what you're going to do, and I praise your name forevermore. Amen. We we continue on. We never take for granted that everyone is saved. It's something that I can't do. I'm responsible to make sure I invite you to Christ. Those of you that are on Facebook, even those of you who may be on Zoom, I can't just assume that everyone is saved. And so with that, mindset that I have to go through the process of inviting you to Christ. That simply means that you invite Christ into your heart, a place that he would reside. He said he's knocking on the door and he's looking for that person to open up their heart and receive them. This is something you have to do willingly. This is not a forceful thing. He wants someone to accept them of their own free will. And when you do that, he'll start showing you great things. He said, if you draw nigh to me, I will draw nigh to you. I'm going to come so close to you and show you great and marvelous things that you have not even seen in your in the past. And so this is an opportunity for you to be connected with Christ. All you have to do is say, Lord, forgive me of my sins. Forgive me for everything I've done wrong. Come into my heart. Be my Lord and Savior. And if you say that and you believe that in your heart, that he's going to do it, 
then the Bible declares you to be saved. It's not anything mystical. It's not anything that you're going to flip and do, uh, you know, things. You're not going to do that to, to get into the kingdom. It's not about that. God keeps it simple. He wants all to come under repentance. So if he wants all, it means he has to make the way all inclusive. Amen. And so we thank you for, for giving your life to Christ. We know that we want you to be into a Bible-based church. It gives you the opportunity to learn more about God and his word and how victorious you can be and through his word. And so when you see that and you start to understand, you start to change and become better. And that's what he's looking for. He wants to change your nature from the sin nature that, that was there to the nature of God. And it's going to take the transformation of the word. And so we thank you for being a part of a word of this word today. But if you want to be a part of this church, come on, give us a call. 504-579-4226, 504-201-3368, or you can email us at utom at gmail.com. We know, first of all, by you giving your life, you give your life into the body of Christ first. And then secondly, we're asking you to be a part of this ministry where we can go through the word and teach you and allow you to grow more. Amen. And so we thank you in advance for joining us. And uh, we know God is going to do great things through you and to you and for you. Amen. Amen. And so um, with that being said, we welcome you into the body of Christ again and secondly into this ministry. And so welcome 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 first lady gonna type the message welcome to those on facebook who gave their life and who decided to be a part of the church and so we thank you in advance for that um let's give god an offering this opportunity to give uh, and then you also receive you 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 give with the premise and with the heart unto god you're not giving because you give into this church i am the face but you're really giving as unto the Lord. And when you give, it's up to you to listen to the spirit of what the spirit is leading you and guiding you to give to the ministry. And so there's many different opportunities to give. You can go to our Facebook page and you can click on use app and it's going to kick you out to secure website. Or you can download the gift plus app for iOS and Android. Um, that's going to also give you a secure website or you can text um, your offering to hashtag funds to 504-226-8243. Again, 504-226-8243. You can tag, uh, text hashtag funds um, and then it's going to give you a list of funds. Then you type the amount um, with dollars and cents and then space. Hashtag in the name of the fund you want to donate to. Now, if it's your first time, just go through the, the prompts. It's going to direct you exactly what to do. And then your next time around, you can text uh, hashtag funds to that number. Uh, those of you who love to give by Cash App, the ID is dollar sign U-T-O-L-D-M, dollar sign U-T-O-L-D-M. And those of you who want a contribution statement, just provide us with your email address, uh, phone number in the comment section and we'll send you that at the end of the tax year and so we believe wholeheartedly at utope ministry that god is going to bless you some 30 some 60 and 100 fold in the same season amen amen uh those of you who need prayer uh go ahead and give us a, a call at those numbers 504-579-4226 504-201-3368 or email us at utom at gmail.com and we definitely will pray for you that your needs are met amen and so um uh also an announcement we are going to have uh we're going to cancel service during the week of thanksgiving uh november 24th that week that wednesday we usually generally uh, have no service during the week of Thanksgiving. We want you to enjoy your time with your family. I know it's going to be a lot and you're going to be dealing with a whole lot of stuff, 
And so take that time that Wednesday and just enjoy your family. And then come that, that following Sunday, come meet us from, for a word from the Lord. And so again, there will be no service Wednesday, November 24th, the week of Thanksgiving. So I'm going to keep announcing that. Uh, we only have one more Wednesday, and then after that next week, we won't have any uh, service. So no service the week of Thanksgiving for us that Wednesday. So uh, those are all of the announcements. Please govern yourselves accordingly. And I leave you with this. God's perfect love is on us, even though we are not perfect. Enjoy this week. Do what you necessarily need to do to get ready for the following week that we can give God thanks for everything. We don't really should have, we really shouldn't have to wait to a week to give God thanks. Every day we should be thanking him because it's, it's the will of God through Christ Jesus concerning us. So we need to thank him every day for everything he's doing for us. And so we don't have to wait to a certain day to do it. So prepare yourself. Thank God every day for everything he's doing for you and enjoy this week. Amen. Amen. Hold up, wait up. You can't stop this here. You can't top this tear. Work too hard, my God. I'ma play my card. I'ma leave your atmosphere. It's so toxic. And I hear your gossip. I'm aware they plotting. But I got no option. And I can't be stopped. I'ma keep on walking. And my power and my purpose. And that backbiting so worthless. And my faith on and it's working. I'm one of one and I'm certain that I won the battle. It's over. We did it. I'm still. I'm C. I'm P. No limit. Can't stop it. It's me and Corbin in the pocket. Got the plug in the socket. They told you that you couldn't do it cause you washed up Ain't like them bad girls said you should get your sauce up But I got this plan and you might not understand I'ma go hard as I can and I'm gonna be the boss of it Just watch me do this, put no limits, only swag on it Walk right up to the front where I belong and brag on it Go to the top, I'ma give it all I got Might take a lot, but we ain't gonna never stop But I don't let it break me Cause I'm still on my way oh.